and its action. <laughs> oh, we thank God so much for a blessed Thursday. And this is Benedict Sergio's Windows Ladies Lounge. We thank God so much for today. And I thank God for my life. And it's an Ose August, Ose August, Ose August. And as you can see, this month, um, I've not been alone. It's nice. It's really nice. <laughs> but anyway, I obeyed God to start alone, and I've enjoyed it. And uh, it's been a blessing to have people with me, uh, starting from Favor My Other Name. We went to it's a love thing. We went to it's a testimony. And when we are ending the month, you know, we always have social development coaching something to keep us in check, something to ensure that our manners are still great, something to show that we have a little etiquette, that even as the door opens for us, we, we still just don't go like that, raw. <laughs> we just don't go raw like that. But I believe by wisdom and by skill, uh, more grace uh, abounds to us. And not only that, when doors are opened onto us, what helps is, um, what are the, the other thing that also helps is that we have the right attitude. And today, we are about to talk about parenting. And um, when I read Proverbs chapter 31, it has, I mean, we all know it to be the virtuous woman, the virtuous wife, and all that. But if you go further up a little, and you look at Proverbs chapter 31 from verses 1 to verse 9, I love it. This is Ken Lemuel whose mother is advising her. And so, from verse 1 says, the words of King Lemuel, the utterance which his mother, his mother, and you know, this is the ladies' lounge. And so at the ladies' lounge, uh, ladies, we are learning to be great mothers. We are uh, learning or we are receiving grace today to be better parents. And I, I, I look for the definition of uh, parenthood or parenting. And it's not anybody, anybody, it's not only for people who have given birth. Uh, so they say, mm, parenting, I'm not really part. No. Even if you are single and you are not married, there's a kind of parenting you might do. Or if you are an elderly person, there's a kind of parenting that might be happening around you. And so raising up of a child, you can say someone is a parent like that. The act of process of you, of course, becoming a parent. <laughs> so you give birth, you have people around you, and listen, you can parent and parent uh, people who you have even employed. People, if you have a shop, people are living with you and all that, you are parenting them. And I love the third meaning that says that taking care of someone, taking care of someone, when you are taking care of somebody. And so taking care of somebody, you would have to be filled yourself. You would have to have certain virtues to be able to pass on to someone. And also know that there are times where if you are definitely parenting a child, um, then it means you should know better. Because a blind person cannot lead a blind person. And so ladies, uh, I pray that this session will bless us to pick at certain values and certain virtues that will make us Virtue, did I say virtuous? That will help us do proper parenting. I'm not talking about virtuous woman today. But listen to, uh, I'm going, so I'm going back to Proverbs chapter 31 from verse 1. The words of King Demuel, the utterance which his mother taught him. What my son, and what son of my womb, and what son of my vows. Do not give your strength to women, nor your weight that which destroy kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings. I just love verse 4. To drink wine, nor for princess intoxicating drink. Least they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. Give, str mm. Give strong wine to him who is perishing. So he's just trying to tell you that, listen, the wine can be for people who are perishing, but for you who is a king, know that, listen, especially I'll just, I'll just focus on verse 4. And three, three and four. So do not give this an advice. Do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which destroy kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink. Listen, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he grows up, he will not depart from it. And I believe it's a value that we can't throw away. And 
um, I, 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 I want to push us that, listen, anything you are growing, you are taking care of that thing. And I don't know why I see somebody in your shop, it's, your, it's, your, it's somehow your baby. You have a vision, it's your baby. Anything at all that, that, that God gives the opportunity to handle, you have a position in church, you, have, you are in charge of, you are parenting one way or the other. And you would have to do it with a kind of apt and skill and virtue. And so today we are talking about parenting. And I believe that uh, you've had this lady's, hey, did I say lady? This woman's, <laughs> you've heard me mention her name several times. In fact, um, she's been one person who has been pushing me, pushing me, always to talk about madness, always talking about etiquette. And Reverend, you can do that. Reverend, you can do that. And I'm like, mm, mm, mm. Okay, I'll see how it goes. And I remember even this particular social development coaching. <laughs> I said, Madam, give me a... <laughs> well, how should I name it? In fact, she even gave me the name. If you listen to most of the sessions on uh, the social development coaching, you hear me mention Portia. And so today I'm blessed that uh, Mrs. Portia Edimensa. So with a hoo hoo and a clap and a shout, can you help me welcome Mrs. For sure. <laughs> One of my daughters who, who I, I nearly say worries me. <laughs> oh, I worry you. <laughs> I worry you. <laughs> you worry me? Yes, ah, Okay, I don't know, but um, she's been a blessing over the period. She, she, she would just say that, mom, you can do that, you can do that, you can do that, and uh, it's, a, it's a blessing. So you're welcome. Thank you so much, mommy. Yes, yeah, so social development, why now you are here? <laughs> I'm, I'm very grateful for this, I guess, opportunity. I hey. don't take it for granted at all. In the month of August, too. <laughs> In the month of August. So, uh, Portia will be doing more talking because oh, I think about two or three weeks ago, or it's been a while, or a month ago, she shared with me something that um, she said she heard me talk about, and it just influenced her and her own kind of parenting skills. So, Today I'll let her share that one, and I believe that it would, it would, it would greatly, greatly help us. So, Portia, generally when we say parenting, beyond beyond book and definitions and all that and dictionary, for you who have been a mother for, uh, uh, <laughs> okay, you've been married for how many years now? At least twelve years. Oh, <laughs> greetings to Mr. Dimensa. Oh. <laughs> Okay, and he is also an August born. Mm -hmm. We'll say August. Yeah, say August. August. <laughs> okay, so generally, and you have three boys, <laughs> three strong boys. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know you were you were you were yearning to have a, a girl. Yes, ma'am. And so that that girl will come very soon. Eh? <laughs> Praise the Lord, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> on this on this exalted place, Amen. <laughs> Anyway, so you have been blessed with three, three, three boys. Okay, so generally, how has parenting been for you? Okay, mommy, it has been exciting. It has been frustrating. It has been tiring. It has been joyous. It's a mixture of a lot okay. of feelings for me. Um, because especially my boys being boys and... What, do, what do you mean by your boys being boys? Um, okay, what I mean? They being boys, they are not... My children are not that calm. <laughs> they, are, they are hyper, let me put it that okay. way. So, they are all over the place. And it's not easy... Let me say, it's not easy putting them to check. It's not easy putting them to check. But... Um, as, as my mother is a highly spiritual mother, and I'm also being a highly spiritual mother, I believe that I don't have an excuse. It's at all costs. I have to raise them in the way of the Lord. And so it's not been easy. There are times that there are things that you've even taught them, said over and over again, and there are times it's like you're not really seeing the effect. <laughs> it's as if they have not heard you. As if they've not heard you, mommy. And mm. so then that, that that's when that then frustration might the come frustration in. Frustration sets in. Yeah. Yes, please, mommy. It's very frustrating sometimes. And sometimes if you're unable to hold yourself, you just burst out. 
let me say this. There are sometimes I even cry <laughs> because I feel that I have put in so much and uh. there is something that I expect to see at this age. And sometimes when I, know, I don't see it, I sometimes cry. I just go to but my your children, the, 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 the oldest is how, 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 how old is she? Kenel is 11 years. The oldest is 11 years. And the youngest is? Is five years. Mm -hmm. Who will be turning six in November. Uh -huh. But, mommy, I Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> mommy. Um, uh, so go ahead. Mommy, there's one thing that, um, okay, I think I saw that also changed my perspective. Um, my elder brother brought um, a white girl from U.S. at the age of three years mm. to live with us. And it was amazing at three years, the things that the little girl knew. Mm. And you realize that there were things that she would say and you realize that there are things that her mother had trained her to see mm. or has said it and she, she has that in mind. So at three years, Kyla could say a lot of things. And for me, it taught me a lesson that I think sometimes in this part of our world, we underestimate the children. We think that they are children. I mean, we really yes, treat them, and it's as if they don't know anything, and they that. Yes. It's been a problem for me because I think we underestimate them. Huh. And so, you have um, a four-year-old child huh. misbehaving or putting up some funny attitude to an adult, and you have about 60% of people say, oh, ja, no, ja, yeah. For yeah. me, so that then, is not a So at a point in time, you as a parent that you even want to correct that child yes, or another mommy. adult, you, you look very weird because leave the child. Yes, mommy. And um, I think it's the Holy Spirit that drew my attention to this, that... <laughs> okay, <laughs> I don't understand. There are times I see people telling you, uh, look at your son or look yes, at them, and then you'll be very angry that at me... <laughs> <laughs> Don't I know that? I have to handle them in this way. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I've seen you very angry at those kind of statements. Yes, mommy. Very angry. <laughs> mommy, I remember one that I think we came to church and within just about 30 minutes when we got to church or one hour, one of my boys got up and said he was going to urinate. So I was at the gate. I was like, go and sit down. You will not weary on yourself. Go and sit down. And another adult was like, oh, Jan, my name come here. I got very angry. Because, mommy, um, for that aspect, I always ask them. So, assuming, okay, I'm blessed to have Reverend Richard Dodd as my father. <laughs> and I asked them, mommy, so assuming Reverend Dodd is preaching on the pulpit, and he's preaching for two hours, and every 20 minutes, he says, he puts... Is it not expected that children, every 15 minutes, they go and weary? It's okay, mommy. For me, it's not normal for me. <laughs> no, I mean, sometimes these things is as if it's normal, and you should allow it like that. Yes, mommy, but I believe the discipline starts from the very tender mm. age mm. because I, I would ask them that, assuming Reverend Dodd is preaching, and every 20 minutes he puts his microphone down and say, I'll be back. How is it going to be like? Assuming Nane Kufuado being the president is in a cabinet meeting. And every 30 minutes... No, but it, this is a kind of nurturing. I understand you. But so then for you as a mother, you feel it's essential that now my child should know this. Yes, mommy. The discipline should start now. It should start now, yes, mommy. Because I believe that what I perceive in my heart for them, where I want them to get to, there are some disciplines they have to get used to it now. Mm, okay. So that it becomes part, part of, them. of them. Okay. Yes, please, mommy. Mm, so, mommy, back to what I. Now, let me say this thing about this. Even I think even for us, I mean, urinating and all that. I mean, you, of course, you, we are, nobody's telling anybody to keep urine on yourself. It's not medically good. But a point where you prepare for events and not only for children. I think this is social development, so I can chip this in where it is important for even as adults. And I remember when I went to school, Wesley Girls High School, I'll never forget the very first speech day that we went to. Hey, we're told you can't get up till the service is ended. And I'm like, hey, what is this? <laughs> and that was, I remember for, for me, 
uh, for us. It was like one week after, uh, <laughs> one week after we had gone to school. And we ended the speech day, and people's parents had left because where they put you to sit, it's like the, the atmosphere has to be organized from beginning to the end. It doesn't matter whether the speech day is ending five or six. Most of us who had come to form one fresh, when we, uh, when we ended, our parents had come and they had left because we, we are not, they will come and call you or you cannot even get up. And you can't even get up to go and weave or go and, <laughs> go and use the washroom. Not that if there's an emergency, I don't know, that one I didn't come in, but up to now, I'm, when, me personally, when I'm leaving the house, my husband will be like, eh, I am, it has become part of me that before I leave the house, I should know that in the next two, three, four hours, <laughs> I mean, if it's not critical and I don't go and meet any, go to a place where maybe I can use a washroom, it means I should be able to keep myself. And there are times these things, like you are saying, they are trainings and they are, it's a discipline where it becomes part of you and you learn it. And so you want to instill it in your children now. Yes, please, mommy. <laughs> so that when Lyle becomes what? The neurosurgeon. <laughs> when, 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 when Lyle becomes the neurosurgeon in the, in the, the theater, in the theater. <laughs> you will say, excuse me, let me go to the washroom. <laughs> and when Ruel becomes what? He becomes the governor of Bank of Ghana. Praise the Lord. Uh, he, too, he handled the money well. Yeah. And not believing. When he's in a very important financial meeting, meeting. with top people. Top people. With IMF, IMF <laughs> officials. He will, not, he, will not, <laughs> he will not be saying. No. And you see, this one, someone will say, hey, there are times where there are, there are, there are exceptions, but it's not, it's not like every day. It's not a rule like every day this thing should happen. And then when, when Penel is what? When Penel becomes the Attorney General hey. of Ghana, hey. and then the, he okay, will, he will so it means that the, he wants to be a lawyer, yes, and you are please. already pushing him to be an Attorney General. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go yes, ahead, please. and just summarize that part. Okay, mommy. So please, um, like I was saying, the conviction the Holy Spirit gave me just today that how do we believe that children go to school? at a tender age, mm. and what they are taught, they are able to assimilate, reproduce it in exam, and score mm. 90. Mm. And we think that they are too young for us to instill certain values mm. in them. Mm. I, I, I was very amazed uh, when, when I got that mm. conviction. Mm. Because even a child in KG1, KG2, they have a whole term, and their teachers who understand them like their parents would understand them, teach them, and some way, somehow, the children are able to assimilate it mm. and reproduce it mm. and score 90% in exams. Mm. So why is it that we think that we can't instill these values in the children and they would understand now and start living by those values? Mm. So, um, I mommy, mean, for me, I believe that... Uh, the greater burden is on us, the parents, mm. because from age zero to the child becomes of age, you mm. are responsible for the child, and how he or she comes out, a lot depends on what you are instilling in the child. Mm. Huh. And so you look at Proverbs 31, and I believe for me, Proverbs 31, that's why at the, from verse 10, it talks about a virtuous woman and a wife. And so look at Martha saying that my child and my son has become is a king. He said, oh, Lemuel, it's not for kings. But I intentionally brought these ones in because I know you have. There, there was a day she sent me a picture of all that you did. You said you did what? Okay, so please, I did. I, I wrote down, I took the, I, I, I actually bought uh, for Penel, I bought a lawyer's robe for him took him a picture, mm -hmm. and then I wrote the, for the academic level where he has to get to. That's mm. the minimum he has to get mm. to. And then the, 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 the positions I would want him to occupy in the legal field. Mm. And then I did the same. So I bought an actual um, stethoscope for Lyle. Mm. And then he had this surgery um, outfit. Mm -hmm. I took him a picture, and then... I also wrote where he has to get to, I mean, the minimum with respect to education, and then what I expect for him. I did the same for, 
for Ruel. And then I also did where the offices I, I want to see them occupy or the positions I want to see them occupy. And then I printed them out. <laughs> I printed them out. Mm. And I put one in their bedroom so that when you sleep, you are seeing it. When you wake up, you are seeing it. And then I put a copy of them in our prayer room. And so I told them that, you see, when you have this in mind, when you go to school and your friends are playing football and you are sitting somewhere reading, they won't understand because... So are you saying they shouldn't play football? These are boys. <laughs> These are boys. Oh, mommy, please Why don't. they shouldn't play football? What are you saying? Mommy, please don't play. <laughs> but if you look at what has been written down for you mm -hmm. that you have to achieve, mm -hmm. there are certain disciplines that you no, have I to I like start. what you just said. I mean, before this, you have set a, a kind of, if you want to be like this, then aim for the higher position, the highest level you can be. Yes. Okay. Okay. So um, if, you, if you look at what you have been, where you have been placed, mm. then there are certain disciplines that you have to get used to. So if you are playing football for one hour, doing all the one hour break in school, now you know that you have to probably limit it to 15 minutes or 20 minutes because there is something ahead of you and you have to start now. So, mommy, it was, um, okay, can I talk about a bit of the background of this? We were yeah. on Zoom. Yeah. And then, hmm, that's why we always bless God for your life. You, you gave a word. I think that day I even didn't come on too early. But at the part where I joined, you said, you know, sometimes we say maybe our parents or our grandparents couldn't lay certain foundations for, for us. us. But as to what are we doing? Mm. What foundations are we laying for? our children and the generation coming after us. Oh. And that word really shook me a lot. So that morning, I sat, I think I sat in the children's hall for almost about three to four hours. And then I was really thinking through what you have said. I was like, no, I think there's more for us to do as parents. Mm. So I prayed and these were the convictions that that came to me. And so it was against that background that I did what I did. So when I was writing them, even as I was writing them for the children, it was, it was ministering to me as well. I was like, wow. Um, so if your child has this in mind and they are thinking around it, oh. and at age 11, so by the time he's thinking about it for the next 10 years, oh. it's going to reorient his mindset about a lot of things. Oh. And maybe you might not probably be the one to say, don't play football, don't do this, don't do that. Because with what, that, what he has in mind, he himself will know that um, there are things he should do and the he shouldn't, things they shouldn't do. do. Yes, please. And one interesting part, Mami. Yeah. I was amazed myself, and, and I thank God for Ruel. Since that that's day, your second, that my second, second son, son. We always use money, but we haven't really paid attention to something on the money. Okay. So I as told hard currency, cash, as the, you are holding as cash you are holding. Okay. So I remember I gave him about three or four notes. And I said, hey, hey, serious mother. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all you want to be the a governor. notes that I've given you. Mm -hmm. And check very well. You'll find a signature on the notes. Mm. So he saw it and I said, yes. What have they written under it? And he said, governor, governor, and then the dates. I was like, okay, so the governor of Bank of Ghana's signature is on every city, every city that does not have the signature of the governor. It's fake. And so if that is the office that you are going to, any time you get money, like how another child will get money and just go and buy your goods, I expect that any time you get money, you first look out for the signature. Look at it and speak to it. <laughs> that <laughs> Declare. Yes, your signature must be on this note someday. Mm. And mommy, myself, 
I was very amazed. I was like, so imagine your child is doing this. His role is eight and, or nine years. Uh, he's eight years. He'll turn nine this year. So at a very tender age, if he understands these things and he's doing it, <laughs> In the next 10 years, by the time he's 19, 20, going ahead, he's not going to behave like how anybody is going so to behave. So what is your faith in this? Uh, especially if you look at Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, that says that train up a child in a way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. What, what is your faith? I mean, you took the inspiration out of what I said that, what, what do you want your children to be like or how do you want them to be uh, like in future? And these ideas came into your mind. That's great because I, you sent me the pictures and all that and I was like, wow, you are really into serious business. But that's one thing I, I love about when the word comes or when you have an encounter. It has a way of transforming you. It all, all of a sudden, uh, uh, your approach to things are, uh, it will change and it will be different. And it's important for us to know that any time we hear the Lord concerning anything, that is worth doing. Let's do it immediately. And it, it will be sad that years to come, you'll be like, hey, I, w I wish I had trained my child like that. I wish I had trained my child like that. And you couldn't. Or things around you. Um, any, anything you are birthing, anything you want to have, you create your own culture. You create the atmosphere you want to be in your home. You create the atmosphere you want to be in your office. You create the atmosphere you want to be in your shop. What is the faith in doing this, knowing that as I train them up, it will be with them forever? Okay, mommy, um, being a Christian and a highly spiritual mother. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Highly spiritual mothers are in the house. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I, I believe that impossible is our language. Mm. And... What a man thinketh, so is he. Mm. And so if my faith is that it's God who makes us. Mm. And that's why I am very, I take it very personal, training them in a godly way, in a spiritual way, so they understand certain things. My faith is that as they, 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 it fills their mind, and then they are thinking about it, it's even direct how they will pray. Mm. Myself, <laughs> mommy, it has even changed how I pray for them. Mm. I, I now, I'm able to pray very specific prayers for them now. Mm. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm able to pray very mm. specific mm. prayers for them mm. now. So it's not, uh, that's Be general. You are yes, praying for please. the child. Yes, it's a general one, but you can't be specific. Yes, please. Yeah. And so my faith is that as it's as they are able to see it now, because what you can't see, you can't have. So if they are able to see it now, with God's direction, with prayer, with the leading of the Holy Spirit, <laughs> it will come to pass. Do you think um, at a point in time, it's not like you are you are you are forcing them to be something in future? Maybe they will not be. Maybe something. <laughs> Something you are looking at. I know, right? I think the last time I was saying that, I think when we were growing up, we didn't have these career days that we were wearing things. <laughs> and I've been having visions. We never did those things. But I think right now, these children are doing that. But um, you know, sometimes when you grow up at a point in time, you you have a change of mind, change of... Do you think it's, it, would, it would box them into one thing? I think maybe they themselves want to be this, so you are trying to guide them. But... Would it, would it not box them or not let them have the liberty maybe in future to be whoever they want to be? Okay, mommy, thank you. Um, uh, you always say something that be at the right place at the right time. Yeah. And I, I thank God that for rural and then penal, yeah. it was a prophecy over their lives. Okay. And so it gave me the understanding of what mm. God wants them to be. Mm. And so that's what I took hold of. Mm. And so um, you can't go outside the will of God. 
you, you have to. <laughs> you have to go. You have, you to, have go. to be in yeah. the will, will of, of God. God. In fact, this thing is more than we are saying. You know, you know as you are talking, I'm looking at uh, Manua having an encounter with the angel and something coming in and there's an instruction of something not cutting off the hair. I mean, there were instructions as to what to keep him. And so even as a mother and as a parent, and do you remember the, 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 the prophecy concerning your child or even look at Jochebed? The Bible, if, well, there wasn't any, that is Moses' mother. There was no specific um, word like a prophecy or an angel coming to appear. But the Bible said that Jochebed, the, the, Moses was born and he was seen as a proper child. He was seen as someone different. And so that's how they could keep him even though they were killing babies. And so for us as mothers, can, 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 and as women, and I always say that before, before at a point you can even be like a mother, for me, like this, as young as I was, my mother would leave my <laughs> my, my siblings. Uh, I mean, whether they have just been born three months or whatever with you. So we all ha somehow, at uh, one way or the other, help bring up people. But can 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 God show us something? And can God can can He entrust us with children? Because listen, when they grow up, they will not depart. Like you said. We grew up and realized that there were lots of things if we were we knew as children, we would not be like this. So it means that there are things that we need to know. Yes. That we can we can guide our children yes, to do it. Yes, please. Mommy, I think I don't know if you remember, but um some years back, you used to say that you have to pray and know the will of God for your child. child yeah. You've been saying, you, you say that, well, for me personally, I've heard you say it a lot. Several times, yeah. I've heard you say it a lot. So, like you're saying, um, if you, the mother, you are, because you've been entrusted with the child, mm. and so you are responsible for the child, child. and so it's your responsibility to mm. pray and seek God's face to know mm. what is his plan or his will for the child, mm. so that you can take steps to guide the child into the will of God. Because, yeah. mommy, sometimes if um, we, we are not able to do that, and I will still refer it to being at the right place at the right time, hearing the right word, and then taking hold of it and running with it. So if, assuming, mommy, I don't, I don't know, or I haven't had any prophecy, or I haven't prayed, and I don't know what God will for my children, sometimes what happens is, we just let them grow generally. And mm -hmm. then when they grow generally, it's like <laughs> they themselves now have to find, find their place. So, mm -hmm. and if, if oh, God is not on our oh. side, they will keep they finding keep on. before they. But if by grace um, you are a mother and you find yourself at the right place, a highly place spiritual, right, spiritual mother. A highly spiritual, a highly spiritual mother. mother. No, a highly yes, spiritual mommy. mother. It is key. Yes. A highly yes. spiritual man. No, look at Rebecca now saying that. I can see that my womb, there are, there are two, there's some fighting here. And then now goes and cry of the Lord. God, what is happening? It's an understanding of this child that I'm raising. At a point in time, I think almost every mother's day, especially when I got the opportunity to uh, preach in church, I always say this. If you, uh, if you know that this is your son, is about to be the next president, or this your daughter is about to be this next. How would you treat that child from childhood? Mommy, you say that a lot. <laughs> you say that a lot. A no, lot. because it changes how you you deal with the thing. And so when you shared with me this kind of mind change, I was very happy because until we get there, one of us, uh, a highly spiritual mother, of course, again, just two weeks ago, and she has a testimony. Now, uh, all of a sudden, she realized that the, the, the daughter was running temperature and she wasn't breathing too well and took her to the hospital. They got to the hospital. I mean, they ran some tests and all that. And the, it was concluded from the test by the doctor that he said, your child has, your daughter has asthma. And this is the child, I think, is that four or five. And <laughs> according to her own testimony, 
she said it became a, a, a sort of argument and misunderstanding between. She said, my child, my daughter doesn't have asthma. <laughs> my daughter doesn't have asthma. She said, Madam Pais, she said, my daughter does not have asthma. Then they gave her, so they nebulized her and uh, gave her inhaler and all that and med medications and they went home. And they told her to go and do further tests. She went to do that test and then she felt, no, there was another, let me say, um, hospital that she could go that was a little higher than where she went because she just went there because it was closer to home, even though it was also another equally good hospital. Then she now takes the results to... <laughs> The, because then she prepared her mind because the other hospital, they told her that uh, if she's coming, she should prepare that they are going to hospitalize her. If it's not um, asthma, I've, I've forgotten exactly what they said, either pneumonia or as well or something, and then she has to be, this is serious, so she, they, they are about to hospitalize her. So and when she's coming, she should prepare that they are coming to uh, be uh, admitted. Then she now takes this to the other hospital and they do the checks and they tell say, Madam, there's nothing wrong with your daughter. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with your daughter. The medications they gave you, they are right medication. Keep on taking these medications and your daughter is fine. And I said, do you know what? I mean, something could have, I mean, we are highly spiritual people. Even if it was, at that point, she did not accept that this is something I'm taking home. And that's how, I don't know, I just loved that testimony she shared that. She could just say that, no, this is not something that is for my daughter. Other than that, then she will now receive the medication. And you know, it could either be or not. But now, I said that, hey, my daughter has, is now an asthmatic uh, <laughs> patient. But by grace, her daughter is fine. And there's nothing wrong with her. What you are saying is very true. You know, there are times that sometimes my children, one of them, like, I'm not feeling well, they'll come like they are, they are, they are sick. And I go, there's nothing wrong with you. Pray over water and drink and go and sleep. <laughs> I like the way you say, you see how she does that's how she <laughs> 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 uh, the, 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 the strong boys have to have a strong mother. Yes, <laughs> Oh. And mommy, and like you are saying, they do that and there is nothing wrong. <laughs> no hospital comes in. No medication comes in. <laughs> oh, may God continue to help us. May God Amen. continue to help us. Amen. This transformation is key, is key. And I looked at some scriptures and I was just, I was just, at this particular scripture, I normally use it. But when I look at it, I just love, especially why a mother's name has to be there. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 15. Proverbs 29, 15. And it reads, The rod and rebuke give wisdom. But a child left to himself. A child. So it's a child. So a child needs direction. A child needs uh, rebuke. A child, oh, I like this. Oh, it's a child. So it means that Give the child what he or she needs now. The child cannot make certain decisions. That doesn't mean that you, you don't involve the child, but you don't leave the child to now tell you what they, they, what they should do. Oh, we are learning. <laughs> no, you see, but at the point, it's a reflection on you as a mother. Yes, please. Yes, please. And mommy, with... This scripture that you uh, let me said. just finish and then you continue. So, but the child left to himself, bring shame to his mother. He didn't say father. Ladies, are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I read this scripture, I'm like, why didn't they say father here? <laughs> and it's like how sometimes it is said that when a, a child does well, they ask, hey, where is the father? <laughs> but when the child does something wrong, they'll say, hey, the mother did not train her well. <laughs> The mother did not train him well. <laughs> You're saying something. Yes, ma Mommy, when you said, when you read the scripture, yeah. and you said, so, um, it means that the child has to be taken care of. Mm. It sh the child shouldn't be left on his no. own. No. And, <laughs> no. Mommy, let me chip in this. You know, um, in law, 
They regard Madam children, lawyer. <laughs> children under 18 years. Mm. They regard them as people with disability. Mm. In that, it means uh, well, that... No, go back again. Yes, please. Um, so when you, when you get to our order 5 of CI 47... Uh -huh. yeah. That's my, my so lawyer refer, daughter talking. <laughs> it refers to children, um, children and then people who are really not... Who are not mentally sound. sound. It refers to them as people with disability. Mm. And the category is children, people who are not mentally sound. With the idea that they are not capable of thinking for themselves. So. Or they are not capable of being in control of their mm. mental faculty. So mm. I mean, they have to be cared for. Mm. And so you realize that for them... There's a special protection for them and mm. all that. Mm. So when you read the scripture, it just occurred to me so that a child cannot be left on his own mm. or her own. Mm. A child has to be taken in every aspect or in every mm. sense of it, spiritually, physically. So a child has to really be taken care of. And until your child is 18 years, he's still a child. You know, the very first time we had a girl's camp here, my perspective about handling children changed. In Hopeful Ministries International, I remember it was around August like this, close to my birthday, and I had a camp for girls, class six, from lower primary into the junior high school. And I was amazed, like you are saying, how they can grab things. How, how, so that's why if you don't put, give them the input, they will get it from somewhere. Yes, so it means it is expedient that we as mothers will now do it first. Yes, please. Yes. And that is why sometimes people will grow up and they would now, in quotes, be cursing their parents and their guidance and people who have not helped them. Because if my mother had helped me, if I had been taught this, if I'd had the opportunity to know this, my life would not be like that. I pray for us. Wherever we find ourselves, may God help us. Amen. May we be good parents. Amen. And and may and and may and you see, when you yourself you have the values and the virtues, there's a way that it will just be uh, transferred to them. And without sometimes you even just even speaking. Yes. Do you have a, any any examples like that? <laughs> yes, please, mommy. Um, sometimes I think we don't take it too serious these days. But saying thank you, mm. saying thank you. Um, I always say that even if <laughs> you are entitled to something, you could still be denied. Mm. So if you are giving, you have to appreciate and say thank you. And so I say, I say thank you. And in my house like this, when their father pays their school fees, of course, it's his responsibility to pay their school fees. But immediately he sends me the receipt. I call them, go and say thank you to your daddy. He has paid your school fees. And they go to say, so sometimes it's like, ah, why are you saying thank you? That's even <laughs> I know. Know why. And, and actually, he's you. listening to you. Hey. I can see that he's commenting <laughs> really on, on, on YouTube. <laughs> he's, he's giving you fans here. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Ebimesa. <laughs> so um, when he buys something for them... Thank you, Mr. Ebimesa. What was this? Thank you, Mr. Ebimesa. More love, Mr. Ebimesa. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, continue. <laughs> Thank you. And recently, Mommy, I, I told them that when they come and I have cooked... And I have served them. You told them? Yes. Mm -hmm. They should say thank you before they start eating their food. And when they finish eating their food too, they should say thank you. So it has become like, aside the other, so when their daddy pays their school fees, thank you. I, everything that comes, I, I just want, I don't want them to take anything for, for granted. granted. I don't want them to take anything for granted. Like I said, even if you feel you are entitled to it, you can be denied. Because it's my responsibility to cook for you as your mother. But I can decide I won't cook. What if you came and I gave all of you five, five CDs? Go and buy something. And, yes. and you didn't really cook for. So as far as I've cooked for you, yes, you have yes. to appreciate it. And mommy, I served them to everybody has a tray. You come and I've served you. 
you. So you have to say thank you. So now, anytime they come, before they even sit down, <laughs> mommy, thank you. When they finish eating, <laughs> mommy, thank you. The food was nice. <laughs> Yeah. And every little thing. Yes, please. And then the use of the word please. Um, sometimes, uh, it gets to me sometimes when we have a lot of people, we talk to people above them, people in authority, people whom have been, they've been giving charge, or yes, who are taking care of them in any way. And... Sometimes we just talk directly like that. We don't even use the word please. And for me, <laughs> it's a big deal for me a little bit because um, I think it's important that we learn to honor in any little way. Oh. And so the use of the word please, um, though you can say mommy, most of the times the children will say, but even when you have to say, mommy, please, Mommy, please. So I just, I, I, I've been, I think they also see me or hear me say it a lot. And then I also tell them. So sometimes, let me just give them the benefits of the doubts that you, they haven't even seen me doing it. I have to tell them. Yeah. So yeah. I tell them and yeah. teach them that this is how you at are At least they will have a, a reference point. Not that they've yes, just seen please. you, but at least you have emphasized that this yes, is something please. you need to do. Yes, please. Yes, please. And one last thing. Sometimes don't you feel like talking too much? Oh, mommy, they they all when I'm not in the house, they are very happy. Yeah. <laughs> and I told I remember one time <laughs> I told them that they should go and read the Bible <laughs> and see the kind of people God say they despise discipline. <laughs> and then they would understand. So they cannot despise discipline now. Mm. And I believe that mommy, when they grow to a certain age. They would understand that oh, yeah, they it, will, ha they will. it, it they has will. done they them will. more good. That, 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 that is the part that I want us to have in our heart. That you are doing them good. They might not see it now, yes, yes. but it would speak. They would appreciate you in, in times past coming in their years when... I always say these little, little things differentiate you from other people. And like I said when I, I was introducing... The, the, the session today, a door will favor can open. But I mean, when two people enter, the attitude will show the difference. The attitude will, will show whether one will be promoted, one will not be promoted, where one will be accepted, one will not. And it's just something very small yes, of yes. saying thank you, saying I'm sorry of your own attitude, being on time. I mean, I'll even say smiling <laughs> and showing appreciation. And there are things that um, probably you say, it's not really in quotes by force. It's not really needed. But it's essential. Yes, and it adds to you to have a, 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 that kind of virtue. And I know as I'm saying it, it will just point, it's like, it, as I said, as you are doing this, four, <laughs> four, as you are pointing this to somebody, four of the fingers are pointing back to you. And it will just give us a little um, work or give us more work as uh, parents, as mothers, as sisters, as brothers, as people at workplace. And what will happen is that it will just put you in check. You, you, so I, believe it, I believe it's putting yourself in check. Yes, please. So you know that um, you have to practice what you preach. <laughs> <laughs> so there and are it's very, that, very difficult. Yes, please. <laughs> there, there are things that you can't do. And mommy, sometimes I believe it's, part of our sacrifices as parents mm. that maybe though you might be an adult and you might take responsibility for your actions or anything you do, for the sake of the child in your care, mm. you have to forfeit your interest. Mm. So yeah. that that's the sacrifice. Yes. That is leadership. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult, but that is leadership. Yes. Mm. You have to forfeit your mm. interest for the sake of the child mm. and for the sake of what you want him to become mm. tomorrow. So, um, mommy, for instance, I, I, I wish you wish you could party, you wish you could do a lot of things. But I want to train these children in the way of the Lord. Maybe at this age, when they pick it up, mm. they might not be able to handle it mm. well. I am an adult, and yeah. I know where I can yeah. draw my boundaries, boundaries yeah. but they are not. And so for the sake of them, I will party. 
every day you see me going to church and serving at church so that you know that that's the life that you have to mm. when i see this your <laughs> boys praying eh? <laughs> in service hey, i'm like hey it's not it's not easy then was, was it rural or ten uh, his face against the wall i i, I said hey <laughs> Oh, but it's great joy. It's great joy. It's great joy. I, I've seen, I've seen you and uh, Mr. Mr. Mesa. We know you are here. Thank you for all your support. I've seen at least it's from Penel being a baby up till now, and I've seen how you have brought these boys up. And God bless you. Amen. May your labor in the Lord never be in vain. Amen, mommy. <laughs> I think this one we can go on and on. I mean, this is a mother and daughter yes, <laughs> session here, and so. Uh, you see, that's when you have a daughter. We, we, we don't gossip about anything. <laughs> we don't talk about people. These are things that we share and we learn and become better. And I've, I've, I've loved the way I've seen you uh, mold these children and push them. And I, I love that part where it's like, I know what is good for my children. And some, no, 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 it's good because some, these things are very critical. And if you have heard of the Lord, I always say like, we always, uh, I mean, depending on who is preaching or talking about it, how Rebecca now um, helped, I will say helped or assisted Jacob to go for the blessing. But I looked at her, and I'm not saying what she did was right or wrong, but all I can see is that a mother who had gone to pray, a mother God had told her, listen, the younger will serve the older. A, a mother who understood what a blessing meant, just uh, uh, from the mouth and the laying on of hands, what it meant. And I believe that he was looking out, she was looking out for the day that Isaac would bless the children and did not miss it when Isaac told uh, Esau to go, go and prepare him food. And who act quickly to ensure that Jacob did not miss the blessing. For me, it is a highly spiritual mother. And so there are things that you stretch yourself to do. And so when you are doing, the people might not understand. And she actually said, even at the point when Jacob had to leave, that let the cares be upon me. It's just, I'm not saying go and pray that prayer. We, we can have all. And so there's a way you can ask for things and not asking cares on yourself. But I believe much wisdom will, can come to us to handle these things. But the, the, the main thing is that it's important for us to be highly spiritual, understand why God has blessed us with these children, blessed you to be a sister, a mother. I mean, even you get to work, and by the time you realize, maybe everybody sees you as a mother. And for us as women, wherever you go, it's like certain duties are for us. And maybe throughout the whole office, you are seen as a mother. And you, in, in, in a sort of way, you don't take it for granted. People are looking up to you. And it might even be sometimes even mothering people who are older. But that had to do it and realize that God has placed you again at that right place at that time for a, 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 a critical uh, change in life with somebody. As I'm talking, I remember when I was on, on Legon campus, I used to go for UCF Monday, Tuesday uh, at Equafo Hall Chapel. And I, the, at that time, S Block was here. And it was it was just male. It was uh, it was yeah, it was a male hall. And I remember I would just be inviting people for meeting. And I'll go to their room, <laughs> room by room. Nobody had nobody had texted me. I was just doing it myself. And I'll just go and wake them up. Go and knock their door and wake them up. I remember one of the guys that I met and I invited and I followed up and followed up for him to join UC of Equafo at that time. By the time I completed or when I was complete, I completed because I was way ahead of him. He became the UCF vice president. And I remember whenever he saw me, he used to call me. He was so grateful. I remember when he was having his wedding, he, <laughs> he was inviting me. Why? He believed that at that point, I'd made an impact in his life. And there are things that those who are ahead, sometimes, as I said, they can see further. And God will put an inspiration in your heart. You are pushing the child. You are pushing that agenda. It might not be understood. That's why I say I like it. Because there are things that sometimes you are even doing for yourself. People might not understand why. But listen, you have seen the bigger picture. And you don't allow people to distract you because the people are lazy. 
there's procrastination. And by the time you realize you are fooling and you'll be like everybody. And we too, you are not going to be like everybody. Your children and your home, you cannot be just like that. And this is my encouragement to us that these little, little things have effect on us. It would show the difference. May we be highly spiritual mothers. A woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. The same Proverbs 31 verse 30. And so position yourself to be praised in terms of parenting. Position yourself to be praised that, like we said, it will be a reflection of you. And I don't know how it will be like. Like you are saying, I always say that it will be different when you know you've done it, but the child has, I mean, turned another way. But with our prayer and knowing that we can have all things, we believe that it will not turn the other way. But even if it gets to that point, at least you know you've done your, your part. Yes. And if you have trained the child, there's, he will not depart from it there would definitely be a turnaround at a point in time in that child's life. But how would it be that you didn't take time to do anything or say anything? Then that one is more worse off. That one will be come with a lot of regret. And, uh, but I just want to chip in here. I mean, if you have not been that kind of mother or parent, it's not too late. I believe it's the reason why you, this, this, this word is coming to you. Have a change of heart. Have a change of mind. Ask God. And like I always say, uh, concerning love or any other thing, Porsche has shared a lot with us. God might give you another strategy. Use that strategy God will give you. Pray. Go on your knees. Let your children be on your prayer list. Let it pray at specific prayers. And let it, let, it, let it come out as a testimony. And by the time you have that heart, you realize that you become a, the best mother uh, that the, the world would, would celebrate. We look at John Wesley and um, Child Wesley, and their mother is celebrated. Why? Uh, the children were many, but the mother had time for all the children, all the children, all the children, all the children. A day for Kwame, a day for Ama, a day for... And you wonder, hey, how can I be doing this? And add to, by the time I'm going to work and coming back looking for food for you, then I'm not coming to have a day with you. But listen, it's, 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 it's worth having because very soon, all of us having to be left home. By the time you realize your children are old <laughs> and they have left you and you didn't have that moment with them. As I was saying this, I remember there was, there's one, one testimony you shared with me. Um, that I don't know whether it was rural that you felt uh, there was an issue with it academic or something, and you pray, yes. and and then you you up you got up going to speak to him, and something happened. Yes. Maybe we can end with that testimony. Okay, so I think I realized that. So when he was transitioning from I think basic two to three, um, the. Personally, I felt, I think the teacher that handled him wasn't too firm, and his, his grace started dropping a lot. And then I went to him, I think it was one, either evening or dawn, and then I spoke to him and I told him that he's a very smart and intelligent boy, uh. and he can, he can become first. He just needs to psych his mind, and he will do it. So I prayed with him, and I encouraged him. He didn't him. think he was a small boy. No, he, he understood <laughs> what you said. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so I encouraged him, and I think uh, some other time, the, the father also did talk to him. Ransford usually tends to kind of come down to their level a little bit. But for me, for what I see... And that's a highly spiritual husband. <laughs> I always say that. Um, and that's this parenting. So let me... At least I know your husband as well. I remember when, when both of you came to church, um, um, Penel was a baby. And throughout that time, in, I never saw Portia holding a baby. Hey! And I was like, hey, what husband is this? <laughs> <laughs> no, you never, I know that all the times you were madam, I didn't, I never saw you, I never saw you holding a baby. I was like, hey, 
uh, continue. So highly spiritual men, you are listening to us. Help us. <laughs> so after I spoke with him, uh -huh. and then they are, I think they went to write exams. And mommy, I think I was so happy when I called you that. Yeah, day. yeah, you were very happy. And when his results came, he it was a drastic shift. Mm. A drastic shift. You know what you were saying now? Just realize, encouragement helps. Eh? Yes, please. And he's been there till date. Oh, wow. He hasn't wow. He's wow. been there till date. He, he needs something from me. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's been there till mm. date. He hasn't dropped. We thank God, like mommy, you always say. It's, I think it, it's, it's very important to take the spiritual aspect of parenting very serious. serious. Because by our strength, we can't do anything. Mm. Um, there might be people probably who have had better opportunities, had better plans for their children. Mm. But it takes God. Mm. For me, it's one thing that, mommy, I, I always hold dear that. It's mm. just God. Mm. Because you can have the best it's of... It's just God. It's yes, true. It's please. just God. You can have the best of wishes, the best mm. of plans for the children. Mm. But if you leave the God factor out... Mm. <laughs> There are people who have trained their children even to medical school. I remember when I was in Kofuidia, um, a family doctor of ours, he would tell me that his mates at the final year went to smoke weed, and the person is mad. Final oh. year in medical school. And especially when they leave home, like he say, and we are, for us as spiritual mothers, we are still there with them in spirit. But if we take the God factor out, it's, it's, it's something that we, we might not be too proud of. So no. for the God factor, um, I think it's very, it's, it, the onus is on us as parents that we take it seriously and let it reflect in the lives of the children. Because when we know the children are all different. Yeah. I realized I've realized this for the past about three, four years now that Penel is a people person. So he easily flows with people. Mm. And this thing that I'm also saying is something that you said. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> against which I, I did that. Um, I paid attention to, to, it. to it. And I realized that he being a people person, he easily his focus easily gets swayed uh. by people because he's that easy going so there's an advantage to it and then there's a, a disadvantage, disadvantage which it. is he, his focus will easily switch and so it became a prayer topic for me like you always say that yeah. so that you know no, so then like you are saying right now you are praying specific prayer prayers. for him yes please mm. and then I realized Rural, too, is very independent-minded. Uh. Rural, I think, um, I always tell Sharon, Rural can, he will greet all right, but he knows who he relates with. Uh. If he doesn't relate with you, mommy, no matter what you do, <laughs> he, won't relate he will with not you. relate with you. Sometimes all of us coming from church and everybody is saying, okay, we'll take Coke. He himself, he alone can say, I don't like. What do you like? I don't like anything. And you know, sometimes you feel that uh, since everybody is taking, taking as a child, you should be able to. But he will be very fine. Like, he's not even bothered about. But, mommy, I realize the disadvantage that the disadv one side disadvantage bit of it is that it was gradually making him become a little bit selfish. In Tinia, or no pen, or whether it will bother you or not. Okay, so that he will that just be focusing on, on him himself. So it also gave me another prayer topic that I have to pray about because um, that aspect wasn't too good. And so, and I think Lyle too. Lyle is the sweetest. <laughs> <laughs> I call him my best friend. He's the most troublesome, <laughs> but he's the sweetest. <laughs> And Lyle is quite manipulative. That's what I, I studied about him. So, so you have studied your children. Yes, please. And see, obey to me. One share your idea of crime. By the time you give it to him, you realize you have given it to him. Mm. So I told Penel that Penel, um, I'm praying for you, but if you don't change and try to be focused, keep your focus, even amidst being a people person. 
I will not let you go to the boarding house in Essex because it means I have to be monitoring you. Uh. So in the morning, when I'm going to work, I'll drop you as presec. When I'm coming back from work, I'll pick you. You have already picked the school he will go to. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's like it's like how there's some prayer I pray for one of us who was going to university. It was a whole prayer topic, myself and my mother. I'll mention them here. Yes, please. So, I, I told him, and then I rewarded to when I get the opportunity, I advise him that look, you have brothers, and then you can't just be only self centered. Sometimes just make some concessions for the other person mm. to also, and then Lyle and I we do have a good time, so we talk a lot. So um, I think it's all God, mommy. Oh, it's God. It's God. It's just God. It's just, it's just God. It's, it's just, just God. God. It's just God. It's just God when you don't leave them out anywhere. Yes. Pray about their school. Pray about their next level. Pray about every single. Thing about that. I remember a friend once went for a naming ceremony, and after that, he told me, Hey, Benedict said, You know, when I went for, like, he was surprised. He said, When I went for this naming ceremony, the, the, the man of God prayed and prayed for the, the child this girl will marry. And the way, like, he was surprised that there was prayer into the future of the child. And it's important. Whenever we are saying things like this, I remember sometimes my mother would say, When we're growing up, <laughs> Not that he was despising us, but I remember there was a time he took us to the market and he had picked that from, she had picked that from school and we're in the car and we I mean, we we're all over the place in the car and there was another person they knew who was also a very dedicated Christian and SU member and the, he too he had gone to pick his children from school <laughs> and the car was just by us, coincidentally. And he said, look at the children in the car. <laughs> Look at how quiet they are in the car reading their books. <laughs> look at you can relate. <laughs> and look at you in the car and all that you are doing. No, I don't know why, but I remember that. But you know what? I think that I recall that because years after I saw this one of those children. I don't want to go into details, but it wasn't something pleasant. And that is why you don't need to compare. May we not compare your child with another? Ask God for grace to handle your own <laughs> and not compare. I, I always say that things happen for people. You can't be inspired about it, but ask God for wisdom for your own. Because by the time you compare, you might be treating your children like how other children are being, are being kept. Be uh, you, you, it might be different. Oh, that's what that scene that I always remember. Look at them <laughs> sitting in the car, reading their books, and you. <laughs> It's a different story altogether. But that, that, that's the joy of motherhood. I mean, but God leads. That's why, that's why we are focusing on, on saying that highly spiritual mothers. And I believe that God will give us the grace to be those kind of mothers. Your last words. Because I, I, like I said, this mother and daughter, we can continue and continue. And so what, what are your last words? like to encourage all of us, like Mommy said, um, even if you are not a parent now, you will be a parent tomorrow. And parenting is in different forms, not even necessarily having a child. But one thing is very key, the God factor. We can't take it out. And like we've always been saying, let us be highly spiritual and then commit the children to God. You know, without God, all this that we are expecting or even saying, mm, it will not come to pass. Imagine you don't know God's will for your child, and then you are just pushing him into a particular direction. Definitely at the point, mommy, like you say, the, the child will turn back. Mm. And so it's, it will be like that investment that you had made on your own with your own efforts. It's like you are not getting the, the benefits that you were expecting. So it pays to be highly spiritual. It pays to always make the God factor paramount in the raising up of our children. And then lastly, let us not underestimate our children. 
and say that, oh, usa, usa, usa. Whatever discipline that God is leading you, whatever ethics that God is leading you, instill in the child now. Because, like I said earlier, whatever they are taught in school, they are able to assimilate it. Mm. They digest it and reproduce it during exams. And they come home with 90%, 80%, and we are so happy. In the same way, like the Bible says, we should train up a child. I think, and, and it's not, I mean, training is continuous. Mm. So it's not mechanical, and I've left it. Yeah, okay. So it's not like today I say it and that's all. I'm tired. I've, I've, I've that's why I was asking, are you not tired sometimes when you talk? Mommy, I really get tired. But there was, there was a day I think I went to the fitting shop. And uh, I think the man was a man of God. He was a reverend minister. Mm. And we were having a conversation about these children upbringing. And the man said, you know what? Talking is part of deliverance. Mm. So if you are a parent, you can't stop talking. Because if you stop talking now, you might pay for it dearly tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So talking is part of deliverance. So being a mother, you have to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk till you see the effects. And so I know I'm the talkative mm -hmm. in the house. They feel I talk a lot, like I, I, I shout a lot, I talk a lot. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Diversa. <laughs> <laughs> I think at the point you were trying to say something about him and I came in. Yes, please. And, mommy, like, um, looking you at You're saying the that he comes food, to their level. Yes, please. And you are the... <laughs> it has to happen now. <laughs> Self-governance <laughs> now. <laughs> so, um, mommy, I think that uh, it's important... Mm. It's, in, it's, it's important that we instill in them now. Mm. They will be able to pick it up mm. from. Because that if, you are, if I do something at the age of five and you haven't seen anything wrong with it, why is it that when I do it at 18 years now, you are shouting yeah, yeah. and telling me that it's not, not the right, right thing to do now? Because, and, and these children are very observant these days. And I think they are... I call them the AI children. Yes, mommy. It's it's very serious. So, um, I don't see you. They don't see why if this thing is not a problem today, then why are you making it a problem tomorrow? Mm. So I think we should let them know now, so that they grow up with it. With it, so that it won't be difficult now trying to turn them around when they are already of age. And so I think, and as Christians and highly spiritual mothers, we know we can't live our lives anyhow because we are living according to God's purpose. And I think all these values come in and we have to instill it in our children so that they become what God really wants them to become. And we shall be accountable for them. Yeah. So, mommy, sometimes I get tired, but when you look at the greater good, you say that it's also part of sacrifice. So you want to keep quiet and sleep, but when you, when, if you look at the greater good, it gingers you up. Then if you have to talk, you, you have talk, to talk so that you can have the effect that you, the greater good that you are expecting to see. It's good. I mean, I know you've rounded up, but I want to ask this uh, question. How, how do you open up for them so that they can speak to you freely about things that they go through. As we were just uh, speaking right now, I, I just remembered that there, there are lots of instances I've had where mothers don't have a clue what their children are going through. A clue. And it, for me, I see it as the relationship between them. And I always say I'll never forget one instance that I, I mean, the woman had her whole perception about the the child, which hmm, I knew something different. But beyond that, I remember at the point this child was almost contemplating suicide. And I could sit down with the mother and the daughter at that time. It was for another reason. Then the mother now steps out to do something, and I'm speaking to this child. Of course, because she could be open and uh, trust me, and I, I was happy at least she could speak to me. 
and she didn't, <laughs> she didn't die. She didn't commit suicide, so I'm happy. But I was so sad that day that this is a mother who, are, who, who is with the daughter and does not have a clue. I don't, I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Yes, yes. And I, I just want to, I, I, how open? Okay, um, mommy, I think previously, um, I wasn't that open to them. I wasn't paying attention. I think my focus more was on what to instill in them. And it's like, so, you didn't have a so choice. So that mommy is a friend. Okay, yes. <laughs> so initially, I wasn't their friend. Uh -huh. And uh, I, would, I would like to give a thumbs up to Ransford. Ransford has been their friend since. So they could tell him a lot of things. A lot. Mm. So for Ransford, I mean, they could tell him just anything. He, he is rather very and open that's he with comes them. down to their level. Yes, please. Yeah, very but at least you are, this one is doing, this one is doing, and you're complimenting yes, each other. Please. But, but for you as a mother. I realized that um, in recent time, mm. I mean, when I saw, there are also times, um, I, I think I said earlier, there are times I go to my room and I cry. Yeah. There are also times I see them exhibiting certain things. I just go to my room and say, God, thank you for these children. Mm. Because ah, so I the can't... crying is not, uh, it's tears of joy. No, the crying is when I'm not seeing what I think I should ah, see. Ah, you should see, okay. And okay. there are also times that I've seen things, it's like the effect of something you have built in them, how mm. they display it out. And I, I, I become so happy. I just go to my room and then thank God for, mm. for them. And so I think at a point in recent time, I realized that now they were beginning to understand certain things that I was trying to instill in them. And so I realized that, okay, now they are growing. And you used to talk to me a lot about it. What the mufre are we? They are boys, so they are boys. When they grow up they and they are taller up. than you. <laughs> That's what yes, I used to mommy. tell you. They are taller than you. <laughs> and you know that you need them. <laughs> recent time, I decided to pay attention to them. So, mm. there are times that I have an open conversation with them. Uh, to the extent of, I even converse with them about sexuality and then what to, what to look out for. Even if they are taking a friend in future. Like, we, 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 now I go, I'm able to go that extent with them. And mommy, please let me tell you, especially because of this recent LGBTQ, yeah. So now I'm very open with them. On, and I realize that it's true that it helps. They are able to open up and then tell you. Lyle, for instance, I'm very free with Lyle. So Lyle doesn't tell lies to me. Mm. Lyle says it's just as it is. He will say just as it is. I think unlike Penel and Ruel, that um, from the very beginning, I was very strict, and especially Penel. <laughs> God bless him, he has suffered. <laughs> <laughs> He's the first. He's the first. <laughs> so I was of the view that he has to create the path. So for Penel, he didn't have it easy at all. <laughs> and so, so I realized for them, there was a little bit of this. You know, as you are talking, I can imagine the next 10, 20 years, <laughs> these children. Yes, please. <laughs> And um, I realized that so there was a little bit of fear mm. then before now. Mm. So even if they've done something, they are not able to open up to me, but they would rather open up to Ransford. Okay. So I remember there are even times that Ransford would tell me and say that Pacho, me mo mo Mr. Yeah, yeah. So that like at least just that one, friend. of course, that is parenting between the two of you. Yes, please. But now I feel it's better, much, much better because I realize that now they, they are growing. Penal is almost like up to my hair and we are able to have open conversations now. Yes, please. So I think, Mami, we should also take that for granted that in as much as we are stealing, instilling values and godly values, sorry, morality and everything, I think we should also be their friend, your like friend. you're saying, yeah, so that they friend. can open up to you and then tell you whatever they are going Thank through so you. that you'll be able to guide them properly. properly. Great, great.
Yeah, more questions are coming. <laughs> My, my mind, but I think that I'll, I'll end with this one. You know, the way you are talking about you and Ransford as your husband and how you are, and I like it because then, it's, I mean, parenting is both. I mean, if you, are, if you are blessed to have your husband or your wife with you and you are doing it, especially in a home, it's great. And there's agreement, then their children would also um, not be confused at a point in time. I just want to know how maybe for both of you, you've handled this, and a point where it's not like competition, where maybe, at a point, like how you are, you are talking, where you realize that, oh, they, he comes to their level and they are more free with him, and hey, me as a mother, I'm losing my place, so, <laughs> no, no, that kind of, you know that there are places like that, and by the time you realize the children are divided and all that, how, how, how are you handling that? Okay, mommy, um, hmm. from the very beginning, it hasn't been like this from the very beginning. Because like I said, from the very onset, um, Ransford wants to come down to their level. Okay, so for example, if I, I dress you up and you go to church and you make yourself dirty, I don't understand why I dress you up for church and you go and play and make yourself dirty. But Ransford understands that, oh, he's a child. So it's normal. I was like, no, it's not every child who comes to church and makes himself dirty. So why is it that you go and make yourself <laughs> so dirty? And so you realize that it becomes a little bit of um, an argument between the two of us. So in the earlier times, I used to say that um, if he does that, the children will think I don't mean well for them or I don't like them. But I think that if they come to me and I'm saying A, and they come to Ransford and they are saying, he's also saying A. It makes it easier because then they understand that mommy and daddy are like and this. That. But he also felt that I was being too hard on them. And so it's not that I shouldn't discipline or correct them, but I should um, also come down yeah, a little to, to bit for them. Yes, please. So it hasn't been like this, but I believe with time, and as they are going, going up, up in certain instances that have come up, Ransford has come to understand me on my level as to how we should instill certain things, like we shouldn't compromise on instilling certain things. And I think I've also come to a point where I've understood that, okay, I have to be a little open and soft with them so that they can also relate okay. with me well. So initially, like you said, mommy, I was like, oh, I don't even care whether they think I'm a bad person. When they grow up, they will understand. Mm -hmm. I, so I wasn't really too bothered about they. So I know they love their father, like they are mostly with their dad. But I didn't have a problem with it. For me, I was concentrating on my duty as a highly spiritual mother. <laughs> and so, but that was, but I think gradually um, going up and over time, Ransford has come to understand me. So now there are things that... So you, you, you've, grown, you've grown as, yes, you've yes. Grown as a couple, as, as a yes, couple and in parenting. Yes, it's the yes, same yes. thing because yes, now yes. it's like you are married and you are giving certificates on the day you are married. <laughs> and <laughs> you are now about to start the journey yes. and you have parenting and it's a whole job because all your children are different. All your children... Like you have a small, your yes, three yes. children, are, and so how you treat this friend is not easy, it's not an easy <laughs> task. That's why you should thank the teachers who are handling the children. <laughs> it's <laughs> you, that one, you can't even handle our <laughs> So, God bless all the teachers. But, um, I believe this has been a blessed conversation, and I want to encourage us that, um, we can do it, we can do it everywhere, and we can be great uh, mothers. Let's look at uh, Lemuel's mother. I just love Proverbs. 31 from the beginning. He said, it's not for kings. Don't give your strength to women. Aye. Don't give yourself to drink. I mean, say it. It's important to say it and continue to say it. I know it's difficult, but let's continue to say it. And that is why this scripture, I want to end with this scripture. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24. Proverbs 13, 24. He who spares his rod hates his son. But he who loves him, discipline him promptly. He who spares them. So when you are keeping quiet, when you don't want to say it and all that, listen, what is happening is rather is that you are hating, you hate your son. But anybody who loves discipline and does it promptly, promptly, the word is underlined, promptly, 
we rather love your son. And um, God bless you for joining me at the Benedicta Josephine Dots Ladies Lounge. I've seen a lot of people who are on um, on YouTube joining us live all over the world. God bless you for joining us. Um, subscribe to it. Like this. Share it with somebody. And let somebody be blessed. And again, at the lounge, impossible is our language. God will give us grace and we will be godly mothers, highly spiritual mothers, will be mothers like Mary who understood the encounter and was with Jesus to the cross. And that shall be our testimony, that we've been godly mothers to the end. May we discipline promptly and no delay. Okay, God bless you. Have a blessed time and see you next week at the Benedicta Josephine Doors Ladies Lounge. And possible is our language, so it's a woohoo. <laughs> And congratulations, 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 congratulations. And, 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 uh, and congratulations to all our husbands. And today, Mr. Dimensa, congratulations <laughs> to you. Congratulations. <laughs> congratulations to you and to all my highly spiritual husbands uh, who have been supporting us. God richly bless you. More love to you all. Bye. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. <laughs>